This is Apollo Control. Uh, we're getting good high bitrate telemetry data at this time from the spacecraft. Uh, the crew now in their sleep period. We don't expect any further conversation from the spacecraft until the sleep period ends at uh, 157 hours 30 minutes. Uh, we'll be prepared to uh, come back up should we get any uh, calls from the crew. In the meantime, we'll be taking the circuit down and uh, continuing to monitor at 153 hours, 19 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Control at 154 hours, 22 minutes. Uh, we've had loss of signal now from the uh, spacecraft on its 36th revolution of the moon. We'll be reacquiring in about 45 minutes. Uh, we had no conversations with the crew on this uh, revolution as we expected. They're in their sleep period. Uh, that sleep period is scheduled to end at uh, 100. 57 hours, 30 minutes, or a little over three hours from now. All spacecraft uh, systems were uh, looking normal as we uh, uh, lost contact with the spacecraft as it went behind the moon. And biomedical data uh, indicates the crew asleep. At 154 hours, 22 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 154 hours, 58 minutes. Uh, we're about 8 minutes, 30 seconds now from reacquiring the command module on its uh, 37th revolution of the moon. Uh, we have a little over an hour and a half left in the uh, sleep period. A correction about two and a half hours. That sleep period is scheduled to end at uh, 157 hours 30 minutes. There will be a change of shift briefing in the Houston News Center in about 15 minutes. Uh, flight Director Clifford Charlesworth is coming on to replace the uh, black team of flight controllers headed by uh, Glenn Lunny. The change of shift uh, briefing will include uh, the flight director, Glenn Lunny, also the flight dynamics officer for this shift, Jay Green, and the capsule communicator, astronaut Don Lind. And we estimate that will begin in about uh, 15 minutes. At 154 hours, 59 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, 156 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. 10 minutes until loss of signal in the 37th lunar revolution. Crew still asleep at this time, some 1 hour 21 minutes remaining in the scheduled sleep period. Present orbit approximately 62.6 uh, by 57.6 nautical miles, apolloon and paralloon respectively. At uh, 159 hours and 4 minutes, uh, just slightly under 3 hours from now, the crew is scheduled to do a 380.5 feet per second service propulsion system maneuver out of plane to the north, which will drive the orbit back over these photo sites, which will be photographed later tomorrow morning. These are candidate landing sites for future Apollo missions. The Framaro Formation, La Land, and uh, one other area, which escapes my memory at the moment. Descartes, there you go. And at 156 hours, 9 minutes, Ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. 157 hours, 23 minutes. Ground elapsed time. We've had uh, acquisition now for about 15 minutes on the 38th revolution. Crew still has about five minutes remaining in the scheduled sleep period. However, it's been noticed on the ground that the high gain antenna angles have been changing in the last few minutes and we're anticipating a call from the crew 
surgeon says that the two crewmen who have biomedical instrumentation during the sleep period uh, are awake at this time. So we'll uh, leave the air-to-ground circuit up live to uh, catch the first exchange this morning. Good morning, Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Morning, 12, standing by. Houston, we're standing by with the uh, updates as called out in your flight plan and in that order. And okay, uh, you ready to copy lunar orbit plane change too? Okay. Maneuver pad lunar orbit plane change two, SPS GNN three five five eight four minus. 078 plus 029er 159er Okay, hold it there, Dick. Uh, okay, let's pick up again on the uh, GET. We were getting a lot of static. 159er 04-4478 minus 00136 plus 03 Eight one one plus all zeros. Roll pitch yaw. All zeros. Zero zero six four zero plus zero zero five six five. Zero three eight one three. Zero one niner. Zero three six eight two. Zero five. Zero four five six. Three eight seven. Foresight star is zero three six. Up one six point five. Left one point nine. And your stars, Sirius and Rigel. You have two two three zero eight four zero seven one. The yellowage is 4 jet, 11 seconds. Standing by for readback. And 12, uh, before the readback, we're also standing by with your state vector, target load, and refs mat. If you give us poo and accept. You have it, Houston. And uh, here comes the readback. Uh, lunar orbit plane change number 2, SPS TNN. 35584. Minus 078 plus 029 159 04 4478 minus 00136 plus 03811. All tips. Roll pitching yaw zero. 00640 plus 005650318135. 0 0 0 0 0 5, left 1.9, Sirius and Rigel, 223 jet 11 seconds. Readback's correct. And one comment, that's heads up. Okay. Consumables update at GET of 157 plus 00. RCS total, 47.1. 47.1. on A. 49.3, And assuming that you've stirred, H2 total, tank 1, 4, 4. Tank 2, 4, 4. O2, 4, 7. And 4, 9 Okay, copied all that. Coming at you with a map update, Rev 39. LOS 158 1632 158 
Standing by with a TEI 41 pad when you're ready to copy. Go ahead. TEI 41, SPS, GNN, 34264 minus 078 plus 028 1641 Your delta V's plus. 36554 plus 04701 plus 00329er. Roll, NA, pitch, 092, yaw, NA. Your ullage, 4 jet, 11 seconds. And that assumes the lunar orbit plane change too. Uh, TEI 41, SPS GNN 34264 minus 078 plus 028 1641 1604 plus 36554 plus 04701 plus 00329 NA 092 NA 4 jet 11 seconds assumes on our orbit plane change 2. That's Charlie. 12, Houston, could we have the configuration of the high gain, track mode, and beam width? Houston, uh, would you like some information on the crater which you made? Yeah. Okay, the location is south 3.95 and west 21.17. And that's uh, relative to the surveyor, 36 nautical miles east and 14 nautical miles south. And you'll be able to see that on your, or the ac actual location is on the southwestern edge of the circle for target of opportunity 39. Your velocity at impact was uh, 5502, and you came in at the angle of about uh, 3.8 degrees relative uh, to local horizontal. Roger, that's uh, 3.9 or 5 south, 21.17 west. And we did pick that up on the PSE. We got some uh, long period oscillations from it. They lasted on the order of uh, 40 to 50 minutes. Good. 12, the computer's yours. Thank you. Pete, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, Pete, you can uh, dispense with the uh, bio harness, and we have some uh, recommendation for you if you feel you need it for uh, clearing up some of the skin irritation. Okay, uh, it, it goes away uh, as soon as I take it off. The one that I have is uh, all dried up now that I moved. Okay, we recommend you consider the following. Uh, one, wash thoroughly around all sensor locations with the wet wipes. You then remove the uh, bio sensors and harness. Wash the uh, skin in those areas with wet wipes and let dry. Apply the skin cream to the affected areas twice daily. And apply no bandages over the irritated areas. And in drying, uh, just let it dry in the air. Okay, thank you. 
Apollo 12, Houston, uh, would you give us the uh, shaft TPAC reading and also whether you see any oscillations? Uh, the trunnion is reading 35.9 and the shaft is reading 0 0.4 and it's oscillating uh, seeing uh, deviations of a half a degree down here. That's about right. Roger, would you take the optics coupling switch to direct and see if it stops? I'd see you do it. Roger. 12, Houston. Say it looks as though it's uh, would be possible for you folks to uh, do some photography on the impact or the crater which you folks made with the ascent stage. Uh, we can uh, give you an idea of what the procedure would involve, and uh, you can use your own discretion as to whether you want to try it. be using the uh, 250 millimeter lens and it'd be hand -hold, handheld out the uh, hatch window. If you like, I can uh, read you up a quick summary of the procedure. Uh, let's see, the procedure is not necessary. Give me the uh, gimbal angles at the time and what window. Okay, uh, what you do is immediately follow in the Lalande High Resolution Photography on Rev 39 which appears to be the best place to pick this up. You'd stop your pitch rate and do a 20 degree roll left. Impact point will be visible out the hatch window, 22 miles south of track. TCA would be 159-4723. And we've already given you the information of where it appears on your target of opportunity map. You would remove the camera from window four, change to 250 millimeter lens, and hand hold out the hatch window. And you, the following settings would, would apply. F5.6 and 1, 1 25th. And you can take uh, several shots. Okay, I've got after the lot uh, photography, stop pitch, 20 degrees roll left. Is 15 9 4 7 2 3 25 millimeter lens F5.6 at 1125. That's right, that's uh, 1 125th. Roger. And uh, that was out of the window number 5? Or the hatch window? That's a firm, out the hatch window. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, with reference to our questions we just had on the optics, I'll tell you what we've seen down here. We've just seen the uh, oscillation intermittently, and so far we've seen no effect on the P-52s. And we've observed this oscillation only in the zero mode. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. 12, we've observed that the high gain antenna works better after being off. Therefore, we'd like to uh, request that you turn the high gain, high gain antenna power off at LOS and then turn it back on again at AOS. Okay. 12 Houston, one minute to LOS. Roger, roger. Roger, there are the twerking angles you're picking up on. That's affirmative, we have them. Okay. Okay, we're twerking at this time.
Well, see you on the other side. Bye-bye. This is Apollo Control. Apollo 12 uh, has just gone around the corner on the 38th revolution. We've had loss of signal from the spacecraft. AOS in uh, about 47 minutes. Ignition, uh, counting down to ignition for the plane change maneuver. Some 47 uh, minutes and five seconds until that maneuver. And at uh, 158 hours, 17 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 159 hours, 2 minutes, ground elapsed time, less than a minute away from acquisition as Apollo 12 comes out from behind the moon on the 39th lunar revolution, and some 2 minutes, 14 seconds until ignition for the uh, SPS plane change maneuver, coming up at uh, 159.04. As mentioned earlier, this 381 foot per second out of plane maneuver will drive the spacecraft orbit back over the potential landing sites for future Apollo missions. These landing sites will be photographed in uh, considerable detail by the crew. Should have acquisition now. We'll stand by for the first call. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we got TM, we're looking at you. Okay, good show. Houston, you're looking good. All right. Houston, go ahead. Okay, fuel is 290.5, ox 
seven. Unbalance, 50 pounds increase. We copy 12. And do you need anything else for us, uh, that burn? Do you need anything else? Negative 12, we've got all we need. Thank you. 12, computer's yours, and we have the uh, information for photo of Lalande. Okay, go ahead. Okay, photo of Lalande, Rev 39, T1, 159er, 4019, T2, 159er, 4419er. Roll picture and yaw. 000.9er. 0, 0, 256.6. 0, 0, 005. Uh, scratch that. That's 000. zero, zero decimal 5. That's correct, and roll is zero 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 point niner. Okay, the time is one five nine four zero one nine one five nine four four one nine. That's correct. <laughs> Apollo twelve, Houston, you can start charge on bat A. Uh, stand by, we'll see what we can work out. Yeah, I knew it was touch and go with fuel reserves, but uh, seeing the engine was so good, I didn't know whether we wound up a little bit more. Okay, 12, we're thinking on that one. Attaboy. 12, Houston, you can start charge on bat A. Houston, go ahead. Hey, Ed, will you ask SAO how come they've got eight minutes worth of exposures on this target when uh, T1 to T2 is only four minutes long? Roger, will do. Dick, uh, that's just pad on the film. You can uh, cut it off before or after okay. uh, as you see fit. Okay. No way. That's possible. And SPS a real hummer, isn't it? Yeah, it's really throwing it out. That's the first time I've seen it wallow. It starts to wallow through the sky now. Yeah, copy that, Dick. Uh And on the uh, target of opportunity number 39, where that's on that circle is the limb, ascent stage crater. Stand by, Pete. It's on the southern, uh, and I'll give you, it's a little bit one way or the other. Stand by. Pete, that's on uh, the south edge, directly on the south edge of the circle. Not a ridge, I guess it's a mountain I'm looking at down there, Ed. This map's not too steepy. 
Okay, Pete, the uh, ridge which I believe you're talking about runs along uh, to the western side of the center of that circle. So that uh, the impact ought to be a little bit to the east of that ridge. Uh, I agree, the map's uh, not too well defined in that area, okay. however. Okay, very good. Thank you. Al, would you verify that uh, you've started that battery charge or that it is in work? It's in work. We're kind of busy right now. Okay, thank you. Mark Houston, bad A charge start. Roger, Pete, thank you. Hello, Houston. 12, Houston, go ahead. Okay, can you pick up the disc? Roger, we have it. Roger, Dick. Looks real good. That tells me we ought to be using. That tells me we ought to be using them more often. And the Houston, I want to go ahead and work at this time. Okay, we're standing by. You got it. Twelve, Houston, with a stereo photo and map update, Rev Forty. Okay, stand by, check. Stereo photo T1 1605854 T2 1615558 Map update Rev 40 LOS 1601524 1615558 some update for the time for shutter speed changes there over on uh, 3-140. There's a shift of five minutes. Just take five minutes and add it to each. And that'll give you for the four of them in the order in which they're on the page. 161 11, 161 21, 161 39, 161 43. Houston, go ahead. Uh, we've been having a lot of discussion here, and we concluded that we goofed on Lalonde, and we got you some deep 500 millimeter pictures of Herschel. Uh, now, I got a question for you. Okay, go ahead. Would you rather we took the 500 millimeters of Lalonde on this next pass rather than the stereo? in order, and uh, we feel that uh, the rev fired at TEI, we could pick up either the stereo strip, which would be a little off that looks like a little over uh, the same diameter as Lalonde off to the left, or we could pick up the 500 millimeter then, either way. Okay, Pete, stand by on that. Twelve, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, Lalonde is uh, the lowest of the photo priority, so uh, we recommend you continue with the flight plan as is. And if it looks to be possible to pick that up on the last rev before TEI, then uh, we can go ahead and give it a go. But uh, don't perturb the flight plan now. Okay, well, we'll give it a go before we leave on the last rev. And uh, y'all will work up the uh, T1, T2 times for us, and uh, we'll get it right this time. Sorry. OK, 
Okay, Pete, no problem. We'll work those up for you. And uh, did you copy the transmission on the changes in the DAC shutter speed uh, on page uh, 3-140? Dash 140. No, we were losing you. We had it. No, we, uh, we cleared it, so uh, how about run that by again? Okay, on page uh, 3 dash 140 of your flight plan, we have the DAC shutter speed changes. There's four of them, and you add five minutes to each one of those. And that'll give you 161.11, 161.21, 161.39. 161.43. Okay, got that done. Roger. 12 Houston, uh, one and a half minutes to LOS. And a uh, reminder on that power on the high gain. And also, were you able to pick up anything on the target of opportunity? No, we weren't. Roger. And high gate power is off. 30 seconds, 12. We'll see you on the other side. And maybe the uh, photos will show something on right. that. Okay. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal from Apollo 12 as it uh, went behind the moon on the 39th revolution. Some 45 minutes from acquisition of signal. We're now in a uh, orbit measuring 64 by 56.7. The uh, lunar orbit plane change maneuver number two was on time and uh, was one half foot per second more than the uh, predicted. Present velocity 5,364 feet per second. And at 160 hours, 16 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 161 hours, ground elapsed time. Less than a minute away from acquisition on the 40th revolution as Apollo 12 comes around to the visible face of the moon. crew still taking uh, various photography exercises and during this pass we'll attach the 16 millimeter motion picture camera to the optics of the navigation sextant using the optics for uh, the actual photography terminator to terminator beginning at uh, about 161 well, as you were. About 160.57, going through 161.50. Ground elapsed time. We're standing by now for acquisition. Some should have it by now. We'll stand by. Houston, standing by. All right, Roger. We're working the stereo strip right now, Ed. Going real well. Real good, Dick. OK, 
Okay, I understand the request, Dick. Uh, we don't place too much uh, importance on that, but if you want it, uh, we can give it to you. Understand that, Dick. We'll get her on the flyby. Say again, 12. I just said we'll get it on the flyby. Roger. 12, Houston, uh, we suggest now 91. Houston, go ahead. We got Dick working this pass, and Al and I are sightseeing. This is really the first chance we've had to uh, get a good look at the moon, so uh, we're uh, enjoying this pass with the map, uh, checking off all the craters. Roger, Pete, understand. Does it look uh, any different uh, after being down there? You get a little better feel for what it's like? I think so. Uh, of course, the backside back there doesn't really look anything like what we were on. Roger. I personally think, uh, Ed, that uh, it's more spectacular for Mormon because you can uh, see all these gigantic craters and the uh, and uh, the small diameter of the moon, and it changes color. When you get on the surface, it's interesting down here in that place. But uh, it's not too much unlike uh, just being out in a big uh, field of pumps on Earth. You have to have some crates around. It's not that, it's not that much difference than uh, on Earth, out in the right place. And of uh, course, you get everything like this, uh, a couple of pumps like this uh, down here. Do you think that'll satisfy Dick? No, I don't know. I'm talking about making a low pass over the landing site before we go. And I make another chance. Can never tell. Hope so. You mentioned that backside looks uh, different. Is it just a different... Uh, Crater density or entirely uh, different uh, nature to it? Looks like different nature to me. The well, backside, like everyone said, is. Uh... Go ahead, Ed. No, go ahead, Al. No, I just was saying, just like everyone said before, the backside is. Uh... A lot more worked over, a lot more uh, worn and smooth. And with the front side, got all these fiery areas, a lot more uh, contrast, and a lot more sharp features to look at. I personally like to look at the front side. It's the males and uh, the higher mountains, the contrast between that divide, and we get more interesting. Right, probably that sun angle has a lot to do with uh, how treacherous some of those mountain sides look. Oh, that's right, Ed. But on the back side here, there's no flat area at all. It's all just pumpy in there, big craters, little craters. Uh, no real sharp contrast between uh, flat and uh, hot mountains, anything like that. That must have been an interesting approach going down there. You had some pretty steep uh, material you were flying over there at uh, pretty shallow sun angles. Do you need uh, PDI? That's a firm. Yeah, well, of course, we, we, uh, last time I said, 
saw it coming up on PDI. It looked like we were really ordering it going through the mountain. But uh, uh, I just kind of occupied watching the descent in the cockpit there. And when we pitched over, and I first looked, I had a foggiest idea where I was, and then all of a sudden, the old pattern was sitting right there. Just like the cape, huh? Well, I did a little LPD and got just, just like it, and, and I did just a little LPD, and mainly to, uh, would you believe it, to get out of the crater, not to get to it, because uh, it looked like we were going to land right smack in the water. We've got a Fido down here telling me about a prediction of six yeah. feet. Say you're a bit broken up. Uh, why don't you uh, try moving the mouthpiece? We'll do that. Twelve. We have a little lunar news for you. That's if you're the only that I saw. Okay. Okay, Pete Nail, Dick, you got a central station. Down there, the power is good, and uh, you got a good signal. Average temperature now is about 72 degrees, and it's slowly increasing about 0.6 degrees per hour. The, the biggest thing that happened recently was the impact of the ascent stage, and the PSE picked that up uh, very well. They consider that one of the most significant things that's uh, happened to date on lun lunar seismology. The LSM uh, is working real well. They just did a flip cal on it. Or they did the flip cal before ascent. And they also noted at ascent that the magnetic field blanked out at ignition and lasted, uh, the blank out lasted for 10 to 12 minutes uh, after. The solar wind has its covers off and uh, is perking right along. The uh, side also picked up some uh, counts in the uh, high energy range of the detectors at ascent. And they also think they have a probable pickup of the impact itself. However, the uh, size is still uh, continues to short out occasionally, and they think it's just uh, degassing. So now they have the high voltage off, and it'll probably bring it back on around lunar noon. Other than that, it looks as though it's really perking right along. You did a slow job. Hey, uh, Ed, uh, what, uh, what's your best estimate now of the effect of uh, all the uh, dust that got on the pieces of equipment we laid down there? Okay, from what we can see down here, there's no observable effect. Uh, that, that's got to be very interesting because I wonder what happened to the east out there. Because obviously you couldn't have blown, uh, 11 couldn't have blown any more dust on that east out than uh, we got over all south. But uh, uh, that thing really got dirty. Carrying it as far as we did and everything else, uh, you just can't help but get it real dirty. Well, it's not that dirty, but uh, it had a fair amount of dust on it. Roger, you Pete. You can see from the pictures when we get them back just exactly how dirty it was. Yeah, I was going to say, if you go ahead, the only other sight that I thought was more spectacular was uh, ascents from the moon. And uh, when that thing made a bang, it stays and started straight up. It actually goes pretty fast. I was a little surprised. And it pitched over so far. I could look straight down and see the descent stage and see 
see the outset and see that we had knocked over any parts of the outset. It didn't look like anything big was being blown that way. I had the camera mounted in the window, pointing, a, you know, pilot's eye view. Instead of pointing down, like previous, I just had it mounted on the window by trying to straight ahead. And it would have caught the same view of Weaverjet, only the thing stopped sometime, and I'm not really sure when. And I'm just hoping that it didn't stop before we left it off and made that pitch over. Because that'll be spectacular to look at on the movie. I started again a couple times, as you know, during the advent, and it still shut down. It, it worked all the time during the descent, but something happened. Roger, I'll sure hope you did catch that. Yeah, that was a concern, perhaps, of that uh, side being pretty susceptible to uh, tipping over there, especially from anything blowing out on the uh, from the ascent itself. Glad to hear it didn't. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Ed. You and Joe and all the guys put together a great lunar surface list. That thing went without a hitch. Well, I think you guys were the prime movers from the beginning. And the hitches that did come up, uh, you sure knew how to work around them. Well done. Anybody can swing a hammer. 12 Houston, we're standing by with a map update for uh, Rev 41, TE iPad, Rev 43, and some times for high resolution photos, Descartes and Frau Marl. Map update, Rev 41, 162, 13, 27, 162, 38, 38, 162, 5 niner, 4 niner. TEI pad, Rev 43, SPS, GNN, 34235, minus 064, plus 024. One six eight two eight five two seven two now eighty one plus two niner four four seven plus zero two seven one niner minus zero zero seven niner zero NA pitch is one two six and NA four jets eleven seconds read back. Time for high resolution photos on Descartes and Frau Marl when you're ready. Go ahead, ready to copy. Okay, Descartes, T1, 163, 2 niner, 1 2. T2, 163, 3 3, 1 2. Roll pitch and yaw. You can use the attitudes in the flight plan. Frau Marl, T1. 163-4001. T2, 163-4401. And again, uh, roll pitch, yaw. Angles are the same as in the flight plan. transcripts of the EVA, uh, you'll figure as you saw some pretty interesting stuff down there. Uh, as a matter of fact, he figures about 11 times. Uh, okay, very good. That's not too bad. 
bed for eight hours. That's for sure. You learn how to be a test pilot by not committing yourself. Say again, you're a bit broken. I say you learn how to be a test pilot by not committing yourself. It's called weasel wording. Guilt by association. We're uh, passing over the uh, crater can right now, and it has a large impact crater in the middle of it that's got blocks so big in it that I can see it with my naked eye laying down there, so they got to be awful big. Must be looking at chunks of the real bedrock. Yeah, and from here, of course, this is a uh, bright impact crater, and the uh, rocks laying out there are pure white in contrast to a rather dull uh, gray shirt texture of the rest of the uh, crater can. Rod, you made that uh, comment also on the surface about some of those which are pure white. Do you think that was just the sun angle, or do you think that's the real color? spectacular descent from low gate. Yeah, and also, uh, say, uh, Ed, I was just looking at the flight plan and noticed what time it was back there. How come we get all the good deals? I guess I'm just lucky. No, I just as soon be up, uh, there in the middle of the night rather than uh, be up there in the day and watch you guys sleep. Apollo 12, Houston. Okay, you're clear, but there's an awful lot of static. We'll be picking up a little better calm fairly shortly. It's a good deal. I'd rather be up when you're up than uh, be watching you sleep during the day. Yeah, that's true. Paul White has become a sleep expert. <laughs> Apollo 12, Houston. High gain angles. Pitch, minus 2-2. Two, two. Yaw, 175. That's much better. Say, on the question uh, you brought up before about the uh, having that hot engine and uh, looking at the return, uh, if we did it the way you suggested, we'd be uh, Wait a second, Ed. Okay. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, we were trying to, uh, Al and I were trying to pick up the snowman from uh, here. Did you get him? Yeah, I got her into binocular. OK, 
Hey, on the question you brought up before, it looks as though your uh, delta V capability would be around 20 feet per second uh, margin, and that looks a little bit small. Okay, no problem. We weren't sweating it. We just uh, knew that if we uh, had uh, a better engine or something, why there was a chance we might have enough to do it. No problem at all. That's right, I think you probably got a little better place to spend it there. About flight time. I bet you there's lots of guys sitting over in the LRL who wouldn't mind trading you a day or two. I suppose you're right. Apollo 12, Houston, we suggest a zero degrees on the shaft. Houston, go ahead. Honeysuckle on net one. Honeysuckle, contact Houston, contact net one, voice check. Honeysuckle, read you loud and clear. All right, I'll read you the same. Uh, Houston, contact Honeysuckle, net one. Uh, we could possibly have a remoting problem. Uh, in house, we're not copying uh, spacecraft being remoted to cost. We're checking. Uh, Roger. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, 12, we had a little bit out of configuration here and we're squared away now. Uh, did you call? No, we didn't. I guess Dick wanted to ask about some gyro torquing angles, but uh, uh, we had gotten a P-52 done, done early the last time and already passed them to you. Okay. Apollo 12, Houston, you can continue with the pitch. We have the DSE dump. You can continue on to the Dakar attitude. Okay. 12, Houston. Go ahead, Ed. Say, Dick, in order to uh, help Fido out a little bit, would you try to do uh, the dumps on the backside where possible? like to see the back side of the moon. Say that again? After watching you on the front side, we'd like to see what the back side looks like. Uh, okay. Apollo 12, Houston, would you verify that the recorder switch is in the forward position? is the tape record switch to forward, if it's not there already. That's where she is, and that's where she'll stay, okay? Apollo 12, one minute to LOS. signal as Apollo 12 went behind the moon on the 40th, near the end of the 40th revolution. Have some 45 minutes, 35 seconds until acquisition again. 
And at 162 hours, 14 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at 162 hours, 59 minutes, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12 uh, will come within acquisition range uh, w in less than a minute. In Mission Control Center, meanwhile, uh, we've had a, a shift turnover. Uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank uh, presently aboard. And uh, Capsule Communicator Jerry Carr has replaced uh, Ed Gibson at that console. We'll stand by now for acquisition. Apollo 12 Houston is listening. Yeah, Roger, Houston, uh, 12 here. Roger, Pete, loud and clear. How you doing this morning, Jerry? Good, how you feeling? Great. But Dick and I are trying to find some T1 right at the moment. We're right about it. Pete and I are finally getting our first look at the moon, uh, just kind of skylarking. Kind of nice to kind of get back away from it and uh, look at it from a distance, huh? Oh, we had, didn't get a chance before we went down to look at it. We always had something going on, and uh, as a result, we just got glimpses. We had a couple of orbs there where we been uh, heading down and uh, taking some photographs. We hadn't had a monitor too closely because they've been done every 20 seconds by the intervalometer and been able to look out the window. Houston, if one of you can find a pencil, I got a uh, Rev 42 map update for you. That was Al Bean saying that uh, it was good to have a chance to take a, an overview or a long look at the moon from a bit of a distance. We're at uh, 163 hours, two minutes presently into the flight. Oh, okay, here I'll bring copy. Okay, map update for Rev 42. LOS is one six four one two zero five. One six four three seven zero nine er one six four five eight two six over. Roger one six four one two zero five one six four three seven zero nine one six four five eight two six. A firm. Apollo 12 now on its uh, 41st revolution. Uh, we presently show an altitude of uh, 58.3 nautical miles above the surface of the moon. Its uh, current orbit, 64.6 uh, nautical miles by 56.4 nautical miles. Apollo 12, Houston. Roger, if you give us accept, we'll start uh, an uplink of your CSM state vector on low bit rate. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 163 hours, uh, 20 minutes uh, now into the flight. Very little conversation on the loop. Uh, the Apollo 12 crew uh, no doubt involved in preparations uh, for tracking and photographing potential future landing sites. Meanwhile, in uh, Mission Control Center Houston, uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank uh, confirms that uh, we do not plan uh, uh, for an early return, a one-day early return uh, for the uh, Apollo 12 crew. We're at uh, 63 hours, 21 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston, the computer's yours. Thank you. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 163 hours of uh, 40 minutes uh, into the flight. We've had uh, no conversation with the crew. 
The uh, guidance and uh, control officer in Mission Control Center uh, has just confirmed to Flight Director Pete Frank that uh, Apollo 12 is in attitude uh, for uh, the uh, tracking and photography of Frau Morrow, one of the uh, candidate landing sites uh, for subsequent Apollo missions. We presently show uh, Apollo 12 uh, in an orbit uh, of 64.6 nautical miles by uh, 56.3 nautical miles. Its velocity, or the spacecraft velocity, now reads uh, 5,357 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, uh, Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston, go. Okay, we got Descartes and we got Fralbara. Good show, Pete. Uh, you can uh, terminate the charge on battery alpha and start it on battery B, the first chance you get. And if you're ready to copy, we can get these uh, tracking pads out of the way that are on your page 3-145 and that ought to take care of the paperwork for a little while. Okay, uh, bat charge B is at work and I'm ready to copy. Okay, Pete, we've got four of them. First one is uh, Charlie Papa 1. T1 is 1, 6. Break, break. Uh, would you hold it just a few minutes? Okay. Uh, we want to take a look at Copernicus. Okay, Houston, ready to copy. Sorry. Okay, Pete, the first one is Charlie Papa 1. Tank T1 is 164 5257. 164 North 04. Next one is Charlie Papa 2, 165, 116, 165, 1615, North, 14, Delta Echo 1 is the next one, 165, 24, Two one one six five two niner one seven and it's on track. Foxtrot Mike one is one six five three five zero eight one six five four zero zero six north zero niner over okay here uh charlie papa one one six four five two five seven one six four five eight zero two north zero four charlie papa two one six five one 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 six one six five one six one five north one four delta echo one That's affirmative, Pete. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, 163 hours, uh, 50 minutes down to the flight. Those uh, pads uh, just passed up by Capcom Jury Carr to uh, Pete Conrad were pads uh, for uh, landmark tracking uh, the CP-1 and CP-2. Uh, CP, a, a, an acronym uh, for control point. We're at uh, 163 hours and presently uh, show an, an altitude of 60.1 nautical miles and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, uh, go low bit rate on PCM. I just got a pretty full mood down there by now, huh, Jerry? That's affirmative, Pete. I got a look at it coming into work this morning, and it's uh, 
almost completely full and it's beautiful. Houston's enjoying a uh, spectacular number here by the uh, by the uh, Terminator. Uh, we're looking at a lot of stuff. I guess uh, nobody seen before has been up here. Roger, Pete. Uh, Houston down here is enjoying uh, good, cold, clear weather, and uh, so the moon is particularly beautiful. Sounds good. Houston, 12, you got the parking angles on the whiskey. Uh, affirmative, Pete. Okay. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 164 hours, 9 minutes now on the flight. Uh, we're less than uh, 3 minutes away from time of loss of signal. We'll stand by to see if uh, capsule communicator Jerry Carr has any final words with the crew before they pass out of range. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Roger, you're about a minute from LOS. Uh, we'll be picking you up again at uh, 164 58 and on your wastewater dump on the back side dump to 15 percent over roger see you at 58 we'll dump to 15. the long feet Apollo Control, Houston, uh, we've had loss of signal with the Apollo 12 command module as it passes above the uh, far side of the moon. We uh, reacquire Apollo 12 at uh, 164 hours, uh, 58 minutes uh, into the flight. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 164 hours, uh, 58 minutes now into the flight. We're some uh, 20 seconds away now from acquisition and standing by. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we've had uh, no contact yet with the crew, although we are receiving data. Presently, uh, we show uh, the onboard computer in program 22. This is the orbital navigation program. We'll stand by now for any conversation uh, as it may develop. It's Apollo Control Houston, uh, 165 hours, uh, three minutes into the flight. We presently show an apolloon of 64.7 nautical miles and a paraloon of 56.1 nautical miles for Apollo 12. Apollo 12's current weight in orbit, uh, 34,163 pounds. Standing by and continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, Apollo 12 uh, performing a, uh, or performing several uh, landmark tracking exercises as we pick them up. This rev, uh, a report from uh, the guidance and control officer over the loop uh, indicates that uh, 12 has completed its uh, first landmark tracking, tracking exercise. We're at uh, 165 hours, five minutes now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 165 hours, uh, 12 minutes into the flight. Capcom uh, Jerry Carr has not yet tried to call Apollo 12. The uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, still actively engaged in uh, their landmark tracking project. So we'll stand by and continue to monitor, and we're at 165 hours, 12 minutes now into the mission. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, do you read? Houston 12, go ahead. Okay, just checking in. I've got a map update and a TEI 45 block data whenever you're ready to copy. Uh, Jerry, can you wait uh, to uh, in between lots here? 
Sure can. You just call, call me when you're ready. Okay, I'll be able to get that after, the next, after this one. Okay. Hey, Jerry, uh, let LB get his uh, gear together. He'll copy that PEI pad. Roger. Go ahead, uh, Jerry. Uh, Roger, TEI 45 block data. You put it on a maneuver pad. SPS GNN. Three, four, one, six, three. NA, NA. Now on 33 is one, seven, two, two, seven, one, six, four, three. Now on 81. Plus three zero two seven niner plus zero two eight three six minus zero 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 niner three NA one two two NA the rest of the pad is NA, Ullage, four jets, 11 seconds, over. Roger, Jerry, copy. Uh, guy 45, SPS, you get in. 34163, NA, NA, 172271643, plus 30279. Roger, and I've got a uh, Rev 43 map update for you. Okay, Rev 40, Rev 43, LOS 166137, 166336. One six six five six five eight. Over. Roger. One six six one zero three seven. One six six three five three six. One six six five six five eight. A firm. Could be word for our uh, family lately. Oh, I expect they're just uh, up and around this morning having breakfast, getting the kids off to school. Uh, I guess when things slow down, what do you say I give them a call and get some words? That's a good idea. Thanks. Uh, is this Al? That's right. Did you get the word that uh, Amy was visited by the Tooth Fairy? Yeah, that happened uh, when you guys were getting ready to uh, for your descent. We didn't have time to get that up to you, but uh, Amy wanted me to be sure and tell you that. Thank you. It's Apollo Control Houston at uh, 165 hours, 19 minutes into the flight. That uh, TEI-43 pad, uh, which was passed up by Jerry Carr to uh, Al Bean, is uh, a maneuver pad which is stored inside the computer uh, only to be utilized in the, the event uh, a requirement existed to return Apollo 12 uh, back toward the Earth on the 43rd revolution. It's uh, a contingency pad only, a block data. We're at uh, 165 hours, 20 minutes into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, 12. 12, Houston, go. Jerry, go ahead with that second group of P-22s, please. Uh, stand by, Dick. We don't have them yet. 
12, Houston, we'll have those for you in just a couple minutes. Apollo 12, Houston, I have those uh, landmark tracking pads now. Okay, Jerry, go ahead. Okay, these are the ones on page 3-149. First one is Charlie Papa 1. T1 is 1665123. 1665629er. North 02. I will have the lat long information for you in a few minutes. Charlie Papa 2. T1 is 167 09er 4216714442 North 14 Delta Echo 1 167-2246 one six seven two seven four three north zero two Foxtrot Mike one one six seven three three zero correction three two one six seven three eight three two north one two over information here in just a minute. I get the same lab marks as what I'm doing right now, Jerry. Uh, 12, Houston, we're going to take your now in 89s and convert that to your lat longs for this uh, particular pass. Over. Oh, okay, I see. Follow 12, Houston. Roger, on that uh, P-22 stuff I just passed up to you, go ahead and use your flight plan uh, uh, lat longs and uh, mark on the same features you did on the previous pass. Okay, Jerry, I understand we'll mark to the same thing as this pass here. That's affirmative. Apollo Control Houston at 165 hours 33 minutes now to the flight. We presently show Apollo 12 at an altitude of 57 nautical miles and in an orbit uh, showing an apolloon of 64.6 nautical miles and a paraloon of 56 nautical miles. We have uh, some 37 minutes remaining on this front side pass. Apollo 12 is now in its uh, 42nd revolution around the moon. We're at 165 hours, uh, 34 minutes, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12. Go ahead, 12. Dick, use the ones in the flight plan, not the non-89s. Okay, thank you. That's uh, Command Module Pilot Dick Gordon talking with uh, Capsule Communicator Jerry Carr planning his uh, second set of uh, landmark uh, tracking uh, exercises. We're at 165 hours, 35 minutes, now into the flight. Houston 12. 
12, Houston, go. Hey, Jerry, how the boys check the, uh, the uh, speed setting on that one? That was a pretty bright target. Yeah, I took the hill at 160th. I think it ought to be about 1, 125th. Did you check them on that? Uh, Roger, which target was that? Okay. Uh, Dick, while I have you, uh, sometime on the backside pass here, I think you can expect to see the manifold pressure on RCS Quad C start to dis decrease, meaning that you've uh, depleted your primary tank. We'd like you to switch to secondary on that quad only, okay. all right? Okay, a secondary on C only, thank you. Yeah, do that just when the manifold pressure starts to decrease. Good show, Dick. Uh, 12 Houston, uh, go ahead. Uh, we concur with you on your uh, setting for uh, Far Morrow. Okay, I'll make it 1 125th on the next pass. Roger, 1 125th. Sapalo Control, Houston, uh, 165 hours, 45 minutes uh, now into the flight. That was Jerry Carr uh, advising uh, Dick Gordon aboard Apollo 12 that uh, they're approaching a point to switch over to the uh, secondary propellant tank uh, on uh, Quad C or Quad Charlie. This uh, one of the reaction uh, control system uh, quads on the uh, service module. We're at uh, 100 and 65 hours, 46 minutes into the flight, and continuing to monitor this Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, com check. Lot clear. Roger, we have some data to uplink to you as soon as we can uh, get good data. Say again, 12. I think the car killed him. Bonk, try to give you a high gain. We're in good except Houston. Roger, it's on its way. Follow 12, Houston, the computer's yours. Thank you much. This is Apollo Control Houston at 166 hours, 8 minutes now into the flight. Uh, we're slightly less than 3 minutes away from loss of signal with Apollo 12. We'll stand by for uh, any parting messages from Capcom uh, Jerry Carr prior to Apollo 12 uh, going uh, behind the moon. Apollo 12, Houston, over. Go ahead, Jerry. Roger, we show you a minute and a half from LOS, and we'll be picking you up at 16656. And uh, would you pass the word to Dick that uh, the P-22 marks are looking real good and they're very consistent. About the only thing we might have to offer is that uh, he's starting his, his marks just a bit too early. Uh, Roger, uh, how much is the bet? Is the About 11 seconds. We'll try to correct that one. Roger. See you on the other side. Houston, uh, 166 hours, uh, 11 minutes into the flight. Jerry Carr uh, did not 
quite have the opportunity to respond to that last comment from Dick Gordon. Since Apollo 12 passed over the hill and out of range uh, with the Mission Control Center here in Houston. We're at uh, 166 hours, 11 minutes, and uh, we'll see uh, Apollo 12 some 45 minutes later as it's presently on its 42nd revolution. This is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 166 hours, 57 minutes uh, now into the flight. We're just a little more than uh, 10 seconds away from time of acquisition on the Apollo 12 command module, and we'll stand by. Uh, Apollo 12 Houston, how do you read? Roger, read you loud and clear. Okay, Houston, you're breaking up. Yankee Clipper, Houston, how do you read me now? Roger, uh, loud and clear. Listen, Jerry, uh, I got something real important for you. Uh, we were taking some target of opportunity photographs with the film pack that we had the 500 millimeter film on and uh, but without going into details right now I'll tell you later when we have the time that magazine back popped off and we're not sure we didn't wipe out that film magazine now uh, what we suggest is is that we dump the landmark tracking you know we got good ones last time on uh, Descartes and Salmara Pump us up another T1, T2 for both of them, and let's get some more 500 millimeters this pass on another magazine. Okay? Roger, Pete, uh, we copy. Stand by one. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, you heard that report from uh, Pete Conrad uh, stating that they were taking uh, target of opportunity photographs and uh, knocked a uh, 500 millimeter magazine off the camera. Uh, the, the request he has in with Mission Control Center now is to uh, substitute additional target of opportunity photography for uh, landmark tracking on this revolution. Uh, we'll stand by uh, for that decision. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, we concur with your plan, Pete, and uh, we're hustling right now to get you some new T1, T2 times for Descartes and from our own. Okay, let me tell you what happened. We, uh, Al was very careful to watch all the time. We were taking the 500 millimeter pictures to, to make sure that the camera was in fact running. And uh, he was watching the side opposite the counter, which has got the, uh, the uh, little uh,
stations. We also don't know that if it, if it was only partially on to begin with, that we really did full film. So I think it's best that we take a fresh magazine which we have and we'll get those pictures again. Roger, Pete. That sounds like the best way to go. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Let's go, Houston. Roger, I've got your T1s and T2s. Uh, we'll have some attitudes for you shortly. Ready to copy? Yes, sir. Okay, for Descartes, Tango 1 is 1672605. Tango 2 is 1673005. For Frau Morrow, Tango 1 is 1673658. Tango 2 is 1674058. And we'll have your attitudes for you in a few minutes. Roger. We'll do it. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, you heard that last exchange uh, between Jerry Carr and uh, Pete Conrad aboard Apollo 12. The uh, landmark tracking uh, for this revolution uh, will be deleted from the flight plan and uh, those were uh, GET times passed up for T1 and T2 on uh, Frau Morrow and Descartes, uh, two uh, prominent candidates uh, as landing sites uh, for future Apollo missions. We're at uh, 167 hours, uh, 11 minutes uh, now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Yankee Clipper, Houston, uh, while you're waiting, I have a Rev 44 map update. Okay. Roger, uh, LOS 168090 1683357. 5510. Over. Roger. 1680905. Roger, and I've got your attitudes for Descartes and for Almoral. Roger, for Descartes. Roll 1.1. Pitch. Two eight five point niner. Yaw one point six. For from Arrow. Roll one point four. Pitch two five two point zero. Yaw two point zero. Clipper Houston, I did not read your readback. Uh, you were broken. Right, your roll, 1.1, y'all 1.6, Descartes, Frau Morrow, roll, 1.4, y'all 2.0. That's affirmative. Houston, if you did a P-52, we need a torquing time. Over. Clipper Houston, I guess we need the angles, too. Over. Okay, Jerry, uh, torquing angles are plus 095, minus 088. 
Roger, copy the time was 1640633 and your torquing angles were plus 0 0.095 minus 0 0.8088 minus 0 0.003. Uh, Clipper Houston, uh, we assume then that you did not do a P-52 at uh, about 165.50, over. No. For Roger. Uh, yes, I did. Excuse me. Okay, those were the numbers uh, we were interested in. Okay, plus this ball. Okay, plus this ball, 023. Minus this ball. Roger, time 165.5205, and the angles were plus 0 0.023, minus 0 0.003, and plus 0 0.073. Hey, hey Jerry, those guys are the last two P22 points. I don't see anything different to the first ones anyway. Uh, Roger, Dick, uh, judging from the results on all the P22s you've been sending down, buddy, you're the expert. That's the one you uh, marked on, right? Yeah, just as last one. I marked on the, uh, the one he has in the cell, but the coordinates are actually for the northern crater. Roger, Dick, understand. Clipper, Houston, how do you read? Loud clear. Okay, we got your high gain and reading you loud and clear now. Roger. We've got the box all taped. We got the box all taped up this time. Roger. Good recovery, guys. So Apollo Control Houston at uh, 167 hours 30 minutes. Uh, the reference to the box all taped up, uh, no doubt, uh, referred to the camera on uh, previous uh, photography, taking target of opportunity uh, photographs. The uh, 500 uh, millimeter magazine uh, was knocked off the camera. As you had heard earlier, the Apollo 12 crew is repeating photography of uh, future potential landing sites. These being Fra Mauro, uh, Descartes, and La Land, uh, which will come at a later pass. We're at uh, 167 hours, uh, 31 minutes, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Clipper, Houston, uh, how do you read now? Clear. Roger, we're reading you weak but clear. Now uh, we're on backup equipment at Honeysuckle. Okay. Loud and clear now, Pete. Okay. okay, Houston, uh, we got Brown Barrow. Roger, Pete. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we're at 167 hours, uh, 46 minutes into the flight. We presently show Apollo 12 uh, with an apolloon of 65 nautical miles and a paraloon of 55.7 nautical miles. 12's uh, present altitude, 60 nautical miles. Uh, now traveling uh, at a speed of uh, 5,347 uh, feet per second. We're standing by for any further conversational exchanges between uh, capsule communicator Jerry Carr and Apollo 12. 
Yankee Clipper, Houston. Go, Houston. Roger, Pete, uh, we've had a meeting of the mines here, and uh, the tentative plan right now is uh, to drop the stereo photos, uh, stereo strip work on Rev 44 because it has a lower priority than the landmark tracking. And uh, so we want to be prepared for landmark tracking on the next Rev. Uh, we'll have pad data available for you by AOS, and uh, what we're going to have to do now is uplink you a new state vector and uh, have you do a P-52 on this pass. Over. Okay, wait. This is Apollo Control Houston at 168 hours, uh, 55 minutes now into the flight. We're less than uh, 30 seconds away at this time from uh, reacquiring Apollo 12. So we'll stand by and listen. We're receiving data at this time from the spacecraft. Uh, Jerry Carr, our capsule communicator, has not yet attempted to contact the crew. This is Houston. Uh, Roger. P-22 tracking update. Your target is Delta Echo 1. T-1 is 169er 2110. 169er 2604. North 05. The lat long and altitude are unchanged from your last pad. For the second target, Foxtrot Mike 1. T1 is 1 6 9 3 1 5 5. 1 6 9 3 6 5 3. North 1 6. Lat long and altitude no change. Over. Uh, Pete, and I've got your uh, Rev 45 update if you're ready. Go ahead. Okay, Rev 45 map update. 170719er. 1703225. 1705340. Over. and I've got a TEI 45 preliminary for you. Okay, wait one. Okay, that's a maneuver pad, Pete. Yeah, I'm out of the data. Okay, go ahead. Roger, preliminary, TEI 45, SPS, GNN. Noun 47, 3, 4, 1, 6, 3. Minus zero six four plus zero two four. Now thirty three one seven two two seven one six one five. Now eighty one plus three zero two seven four plus zero. Two niner seven eight minus zero zero one niner six roll pitch and yaw one eight zero all zips all zips noun forty four both in a delta vt three zero four two one two one zero three zero two zero niner sexton zero one two 
three, two, niner. Two, three, seven. Foresight. Zero, four, one. Down, zero, one, six. Left, four, eight. Mound 61. Minus, one, five, eight, two. Minus, one, six, five, zero, zero. EMS, one, one, seven, one, two, three, six, one, niner, eight. GET of O five G is two, four, four, two, one, five, five. GDC align on Sirius and Rigel. Roll is one, three, eight. Pitch, zero, seven, niner. Yaw, zero, zero, two. Four jet ullage, 11 seconds, over. Roger, Houston, a copy, three, four, one, six, three. Minus, zero, six, four, plus, zero, two, four. One, seven, two, two, seven, one, six, one, five. GDC aligned stars and uh, angles. Roger. Sirius and Rigel, 138 4 jet, 11 seconds. Roger, you got it, Al. This is Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight. You heard uh, J Capcom Jerry Carr pass along the uh, preliminary TEI Revolution 45 pad and uh, we will discern some of those numbers and pass them along to you. The uh, ground elapsed time uh, for ignition included in this pad is 172 hours uh, 27 minutes 16.15 seconds with a delta velocity in the x-axis of uh, plus uh, 3,027.4 feet per second with a uh, burn time of uh, 2 minutes 10 seconds. The uh, ground elapsed time for 0.05 g based on this preliminary pad is 244 hours 21 minutes 55 seconds with uh, a longitude and latitude shown as 15.82 degrees south latitude and 165 degrees west longitude. Uh, this of course is a preliminary pad and uh, will be updated. We're at uh, 169 hours, nine minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston.
This is Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours uh, 34 minutes now into the flight of Apollo 12. We presently show Apollo 12 in an orbit uh, around the moon of 65.2 nautical miles, uh, apolloon, and 55.5 uh, nautical miles, paralloon. We've had uh, no conversation with the Apollo 12 crew since we contacted them at the onset of this acquisition. The uh, crew, uh, no doubt, busily involved uh, with their stereo photography and uh, following that uh, landmark tracking on this, the 44th revolution. Meanwhile, we have received a uh, report uh, that the ALSEP central station and all experiments continue to function at this time, 47 hours after deployment on the lunar surface by the crew of Apollo 12. Normal uh, scientific measurements uh, were supplemented uh, by significant effects of uh, the lunar module uh, ascent and the uh, impact of the empty uh, ascent stage onto the surface. Uh, the impact point was uh, 39 nautical miles uh, from ALSEP and the resulting waves were seen by the passive seismic experiment uh, for some 55 minutes. The magnetometer observed flux variations uh, for about 10 minutes at the time of uh, limb ascent. At 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on November 20, it detected entry of the moon into the Earth's magnetic uh, tail. Removal of the dust covers uh, from the sensors of the solar wind uh, spectrometer were accomplished by ground command uh, one hour after limb ascent. This event was detected by the passive seismic experiment. The solar wind spectrometer instrument is now in full operations. <clears throat> Measurements of the thermal ion detector increased at the time of limb ascent. There was also a slight increase uh, which may be related to uh, limb impact. High voltage uh, power supplies in this instrument shut themselves off after an initial period of operation. Command turn on can be performed successfully but uh, subsequently shuts off. This is believed to indicate an outgassing of the instrument in the lunar vacuum and should clear up after a a thorough bake-out, uh, perhaps around lunar noon. We're at uh, 169 hours, uh, 37 minutes, uh, now under the flight of Apollo 12, and uh, this is Apollo Control continuing to monitor. The Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, tracking looked real good. Uh, when you get to the uh, P-52 attitude, we'd like to have the high gain, and we've got your uh, uh, refs mat for TEI coming up. Okay. Reading you loud and clear. Clipper Houston, if we can have Poon accept, we'll ship your refs mat up. Roger, it's on the way. Clipper Houston, I uh, got a special report for you uh, on your CSM consumables. We've had you doing so many off nominal things, we thought you'd probably like a quick off the cuff report. Right now, you stand as of uh, 169 or plus 20. You stand with 37% RCS total. And it's uh, Alpha is 38%, Bravo is 37, Charlie's 37, and Delta is 36. Over. Roger. 
So Apollo Control Houston at uh, 169 hours, uh, 51 minutes now into the flight. We've uh, had relatively little conversation uh, with the Apollo 12 crew on this, the uh, 44th revolution around the moon. Jerry Carr just uh, passed along a uh, quick look at uh, consumables aboard, uh, referring there to uh, propellants uh, for the service module uh, RCS quads. And at this time we show Apollo 12 uh, in an orbit of 65.2 nautical miles by 55.2 nautical miles. Presently uh, near its apaloon uh, with an, showing an altitude of 62 nautical miles. We'll stand by and continue to monitor. We've got 15 minutes uh, remaining until we lose uh, signal with the Apollo 12 command module on this uh, front side pass around the moon. Clipper Houston, the computer's yours. Houston? Clipper Houston, go. He drives a good bus, Houston. I need to those angles. Roger, they're beautiful. And we're twerking at this time. Roger. Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours of 58 minutes down to the flight. Less than 10 minutes away from time of loss of signal. Uh, that report uh, from Apollo 12 uh, coming from Dick Gordon. The uh, Apollo 12 uh, spacecraft uh, presently in program 52, uh, a navigational uh, platform alignment program. So at uh, 169 hours, 58 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 170 hours, uh, 4 minutes now into the flight. We're uh, less than 4 minutes away now from scheduled time of loss of signal. Uh, we'll stand by and continue to monitor for any uh, final call-ups that uh, Jerry Carr might make uh, to the Apollo 12 crew uh, before they pass out of range and over the uh, far side of the moon. Yankee Clipper Houston, uh, you're one minute from LOS. Uh, things are looking good and we're looking for you around the horn at 170 Five three over. Roger one seven zero fifty three. See you then. Roger. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 170 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12, and we've just had loss of signal with the uh, command and service module as it, as the spacecraft with the Apollo 12 crew passes above the backside of the moon. Meanwhile, in uh, Mission Control Center Houston, we're undergoing a uh, change of shift among flight controllers. Flight director uh, Pete Frank and his orange uh, flight control team will be leaving their consoles and being replaced by uh, flight director uh, Jerry Griffin and the gold flight control team. As uh, Pete Frank's uh, group of flight controllers came on duty this morning, uh, the crew was awake. Uh, However, it had been previously reported uh, by the crew that uh, Pete Conrad uh, slept some four and a half hours uh, during the rest cycle. Uh, Al Bean uh, reported four hours and uh, Dick Gordon four hours, somewhat under uh, the period of time allocated a seven and a half hour rest period. Uh, during uh, the day, the uh, crew showed some signs of weariness uh, no doubt accumulated uh, 
from the busy schedule of the preceding days, uh, they lacked uh, some of the uh, exuberance and a tendency to talk that uh, they have shown during the more active uh, periods of their lunar flight. The day itself was spent in photography of uh, possible future Apollo landing sites and landmark tracking. When Pete Conrad uh, reported that uh, a 500 millimeter uh, magazine uh, was knocked off of the camera, the control center and the uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, became in, involved in what uh, was termed by one of the flight controllers in the mission control center as Gemini-type flight planning, uh, real-time changes in flight. On uh, Rev 43, landmark tracking uh, was replaced with a uh, repeat of the uh, photography of the Descartes and Fra Mauro sites. On, uh, the front side pass of Rev 44, uh, the Apollo 12 crew did a combination of stereo photography and landmark tracking. The, uh, also at the request of uh, the Mission Control Center, Apollo 12 switched over to the uh, secondary propellant tanks uh, on the uh, four uh, RCS uh, quads on the service module. At the start of, uh, or at the onset of acquisition for the 44th uh, revolution, a preliminary pad uh, for TEI was passed up to uh, Pete Conrad, who uh, copied down uh, those numbers, uh, preliminary pad. There will be a, a, a final pad that will be passed on uh, to the crew just prior uh, to the burn itself. We'll repeat again some of those preliminary numbers that were included in that pad. Uh, the ground elapsed time for ignition, uh, 172 hours, 27 minutes, 16.15 seconds. The uh, total delta V of uh, 3,042 uh, Point one feet per second, a posi-grade burn, of course, uh, for this return trip from the moon, and a uh, burn duration of uh, two minutes, ten seconds. We're at uh, 170 hours, uh, 12 minutes into the flight uh, of Apollo 12, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 170 hours, 13 minutes now into the flight. And uh, we did want to uh, advise all members of the press that a briefing concerning release of onboard photography will be held at uh, 1 p.m. today. That's uh, less than uh, 30 minutes from this time at 1 p.m. today in the uh, Houston News Center. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 32 minutes, at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, five minutes from now. In the Houston News Center, there will be a briefing on the release of onboard photography. Repeating, the re briefing on the release of onboard photography will begin in the Houston News Center in five minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 53 minutes. We're about 15 seconds away from acquisition of Yankee Clipper on the 45th Lunar Revolution. The Capcom on this shift is astronaut Don Lind. We'll stand by for uh, acquisition. We have acquisition of signal.
Apollo 12. Uh, Hello, you can clip her here. Uh, Roger, uh, we've got... Hello there, how are you today? Just fine. How's things up near the moon? Uh, not too bad, but I think we're about ready to leave. Very good. We'll be glad to have you back. We haven't met anybody up here. <laughs> hey, listen, I've got some uh, times... We haven't found any strangers. Thank goodness. Hey, Dick, uh, we've got a state vector and a target load for you anytime you want to give us the uh, computer. And also, I've got uh, the data for the higher resolution photography pad for Lalonde, but we want to uh, make sure that you understand that this is your option. Uh, we don't want to press you too much on this last pass before TEI. So if you want to do it, fine. We'll appreciate it. If not, oh. it's your option. God, we understand that we want to do it because I'm messing up myself this morning. I want to get it. Okay, I'll whenever you're ready to copy, I'll give you the money, the uh, information. Go ahead, right. I'm ready to copy. Okay, T1 is 1713052. T2 is 171 plus 34 plus 52. Roll. 7.1 pitch 141.1 yaw 8.2 maneuver to the attitude by 171 plus 24 now the target is not the crater rim the target has been displaced south 8 nautical miles so what we'd like you to do is estimate that pick a point near that spot and track whatever point you pick now the gouge on eight nautical miles is that it's three lines on the coas, and the radius of the crater is six and one quarter nautical miles. The camera settings remain the same. You've got uh, pull and accept on a computer, Houston. Thank you. Hey, uh, Houston, uh, we're kicking this three-line with business over, uh, are you uh, saying that an eight nautical miles in acquisition is three line widths worth on the COAS? Three degrees, that is three marks offset. Oh, oh, oh three degrees. Okay, very good, I understand. Uh, I have for you, when you want to copy them, uh, the updates to your TEI-45 pad and also a TEI-46 pad. We can do that any time, either before or after the photography that you want. Okay, we're ready to do that in about two seconds. Roger. Okay, go ahead. Okay, do you want the whole uh, TEI pad over again uh, or just the changes? There will be four of them. Why don't you just give us the changes? Okay, this is the TEI-45 pad. The first change is noun 33. The correct one is 172271614. Noun 81 is plus 30272 plus 03021 minus zero zero two five three the delta v burn time box is three zero four two three two one zero three zero two one one and the get for point oh five g is two four four plus two one plus five six. Okay, we need the delta VT, the burn time, and delta VC one more time. Okay, delta VT is three zero four two three two one zero three zero two one one. Apollo 12, the computer's yours. Thank you. Roger. I had, uh, Houston, did you agree with that readback? 
We didn't get your read back. Roger, uh, how you hear now? Hear you loud and clear. Okay. First correction was now 33 in the second column. Should read 1614. Down 81, Delta DX is plus 30272. Delta DY is plus 03021. Delta DC is minus 00253. Delta V T is 30423. Third time remains 2 plus 1 0. Delta V C is 30211. And GEP of 05 G is 2442156. That is correct. Uh, do you want the TEI 46 pad? Wait just a second. Okay. Uh, Roger, this is the TEI 46, SPS, GNN. Noun 47, NA. Noun 48, NA. Time is 1742715541. Noun 81, plus 30723. Plus zero three one two seven minus zero one eight niner five. Row in a pitch three five niner yaw in a college is four jet eleven seconds. Roger, understand. Apollo 12, break, break. Houston, Apollo 12, uh, sorry we were maneuvering in and lost you. Uh, how do you hear now? Read you loud and clear again. We lost you just as you started your read back. Okay, SPS G and N, and we go down to uh, down 33 plus 00174 plus 00027 plus 01541 plus 30723 plus 03127 minus 01895. NA 359, NA 4 channel is for 11 seconds, sorry. That's affirmative. I've also got a Rev 46 map update if you want it. We don't need it. Uh, I better give you your AOS time, don't you think? Yeah, these guys are getting eager. Up. Uh, Roger, AOS uh, with uh, TEI is 172 plus 40 plus 42. Uh, without TEI is 172 plus 52 plus 00. Uh, okay, that's 172 Roger. Uh, just a question. We missed that one readback attempt. Did you give us a readback on that Lalonde uh, photography stuff that we missed also? Uh, I sure did. Uh, I'll read it back again if you'd like. Okay. How about 171305 1.1, We agree to all that. Thanks very much. Okay, you have your uh, state vector and your target load, and the computer's yours. If you can. Okay, Roger. Thank you. Roger. Thank you.
this is Apollo Control at 171 hours 14 minutes. To recap, the uh, TEI Trans Earth injection maneuver. Time of ignition 172 hours 27 minutes 16 seconds. This will be performed while Yankee Clipper is behind the moon. Delta V, increase in velocity of 3,042.3 feet per second. Duration of the burn, 2 minutes, 9.84 seconds. Some of the uh, entry numbers based on this TEI, and these numbers do not take into account any mid-courses. They are based strictly on the TEI burn. 400,000 feet time would be 244 hours, 21 minutes, 27 seconds. Yankee Clipper would reach 05G, 244 hours, 21 minutes, 56 seconds. Splash predicted time, 244 hours, 35 minutes, 21 seconds. Based on this uh, burn, the velocity at, at entry interface is projected to be 36,116.4 feet per second. And it, this TEI burn is targeted for an entry angle of minus 6.50 degrees. Acquisition time with a successful TEI burn, 172 hours, 40 minutes, 42 seconds. Acquisition time without a burn, 172 hours, 52 minutes, 0 seconds. We'll continue to stand by live for any air to ground. This is Mission Control Houston. At 171 hours, 17 minutes. Houston, Apollo 12. Go. Three TI, EI systems checks are complete. Very good. Apollo 12, Omni Alpha, please. Houston, do you read?
time is 1715708, which is about two or three minutes after it's shown in the flight plan for the star check. Twenty minutes of acquisition time remains in this 45th lunar revolution. Dick Gordon reporting that Yankee Clipper is in the proper attitude for TEI, reporting that shortly he will be going to program 40 on the command module computer. That's the program for SPS thrusting using the big service propulsion system. Roger, thank you. Two members of the backup crew for Apollo 12 have joined Don Lind at the Capcom console. They're the commander, Dave Scott, and the backup command module pilot, Al Worden. Deke Slayton, the director of flight crew operations, and astronaut Tom Stafford, chief of the astronaut office, are also at the console. Houston, we show about two minutes to LOS, and everything is looking good to us down here. Roger, we got the other side. Very good. We've got a nice spot in the South Pacific, all reser reserved for you. Okay. Apollo 12, Houston, we'll see you coming around the other side at 172.40, headed for home. Roger, roger, bye-bye. See you on the other side. Have fun. And we've had loss of signal from Yankee Clipper at 172 hours, 5 minutes. As Commander Pete Conrad says, roger, roger, bye-bye. See you on the other side. Trans-Earth injection planned for 172 hours, 27 minutes, 16 seconds. With a good burn, we'll acquire the signal from Apollo 12 at 172 hours, 40 minutes, 42 seconds. We'll probably be a little, a few seconds after that before we get some voice. Without a burn, acquisition of signal 172.52 even. And we should have some television approximately 15 minutes after acquisition uh, with the TEI burn. Television planned about 172 hours, 55 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston at 172 hours, 7 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 27 minutes. We're 10 seconds away from ignition time for the trans-Earth injection burn. Mark, the burn should be starting right now. Yankee Clipper is behind the moon where we cannot monitor the burn. We'll get a report on it 
when we acquire uh, the spacecraft. Yankee Clipper's weight at loss of signal on this revolution was 34,163 pounds. Should be considerably lighter the next time we see the spacecraft after this burn. Duration of this burn, 2 minutes, 9.84 seconds. According to the clock, we're 50 minutes and 50 seconds into this burn right now. The Yankee Clipper's velocity just prior to the burn uh, was uh, 5,320 feet per second. To this will be added 3,042.3 feet per second. We'll come back up uh, just prior to acquisition time. We're now 11 minutes and 50 seconds away from acquisition time, given a good burn. This is Mission Control Houston at 172 hours, 28 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 39 minutes. We're one minute, 35 seconds away from the time when we should receive Yankee Clipper signal after trans-Earth injection burn. We'll stand by live from now on. All of the uh, TV lines are up. It, it is conceivable uh, the crew could have the TV on at the time they come around the moon. It's not scheduled for that time, but uh, we're prepared to take a TV picture should uh, the camera be on. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. AOS, we have acquisition of signal. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello, Houston. Apollo 12, approved home. Very good. Got a burn status report for you. Burn sign. Burn sign plus one one. CGX was zero. CGY was. Uh, Roger, 12, we got uh, on time, 2 plus 1, 1, 0, plus 0.7, plus 0.1, minus 14.4, and will you say again, your transmissions were pretty weak on the end. Roger, fuel was 7.4, oxidizer was 7.7, .7, and the unbalance was plus 50.
Roger, 7.4, 7.7, and plus 50, looks good. Apollo 12, Houston, if you have a camera out already and plan some pictures uh, coming back, we have a target of opportunity for you. However, if you don't have a camera out, we don't want you to bother to dig one out. We have a camera out. Uh, Roger, they would uh, be extremely happy if you could get some uh, pictures of high lunar latitudes so that we can get some small scale mapping. The procedure is as follows. At time 170 plus 05, we'd like you to use the Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter lens, black and white film, F 5.6, 250th, and infinity, and take pictures at high latitudes, three frames about every 30 seconds. clarify, they want three frames together at 30 second intervals. Roger, and give me the time again, would you uh, please? Well, the time's not critical. Uh, uh, 173 plus 05, which is sort of during the last half of your TV pass, but this is uh, your option. Okay. Are you ready to receive Yankee Clipper is 426 nautical miles away from the moon now. Velocity 7,396 feet per second. Weight 25,289 pounds. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, we're ready for TV anytime you want to send some down to us. Okay, we're trying to get into a good position right now. <coughs> the uh, Normal want is for a little bit later, but we're leaving the moon so fast we thought we better keep it. We're ready anytime uh, you want to send it. We're standing by for a TV signal. We have nothing yet. And a black and white picture coming in. And why? We expect color any minute. Okay, looks like we're climbing straight up from it. Uh, now we've got a good picture in true and living color. Right. Change windows with it, uh, Houston. Roger. We really get the impression that you're on a fast elevator. Uh, we see your view along the Terminator now, although we don't see quite as much coverage as we did before. Oh, here it comes in now.
12, it really looks like you're climbing out in burner. Yeah, we're going to moving out, Don. That thing very long gets some altitude out of that place. We've got you looking right at the Terminator now, of course, and up, uh, up towards the north. Alvaro, get busy getting black and white. I'm on the uh, 16, holding the TV monitor for Pete. We're all kind of busy letting you see all this. It looks great. One of the things that uh, you're probably saying, probably noticed on your TV screen is uh, how rough it looks along the Terminator line. And this is, was our impression the first time we passed over it. We said to ourselves, there, now there's a real rough part of the moon. And the next day when the Terminator moved 14 degrees, we found that uh, the part that uh, was now in a higher sun looked fairly uh, smooth, or at least like the rest of the moon is as you see it. And the part that was now under the Terminator looked like the roughest. So I guess you get a real feel for the texture of the moon by looking at at near the Terminator, where you can see uh, the height of the uh, craters and the mountains and uh, all the many uh, features that are on the moon in uh, more relief. Roger. If you point the camera up there towards the north, you can show a couple of long rills. Uh, Roger, that texture really comes through loud and clear on your picture. The uh, impression that I get, Don, and I had this impression the first time I looked at the Terminator 2, is that it's really useless for you all to have color down there because it's pure black and white. And uh, the way it looks to me right now, where we are, uh, looks to me like a moon. And uh, I'm not really looking at the real moon. It, uh, it just doesn't look uh, right. It's so black and white. It looks like a painting. Right, it looks just like a black and white photograph, doesn't it? Roger, we copy. Well, it, it's real enough to think we want to get going the direction I'm going after 90 hours. Upper top, uh, I see one rill up there. I don't know if you can see it on your TV camera. It's almost a straight line. It's about, uh, I'm looking at the monitor and I can't see it on the monitor. It's about uh, a third of the way down from the top. It runs horizontally across there and it looks just almost like a straight line. Roger, it's kind of hard for us to see it on our screen down here. Uh, can you ident identify any of the features for us, 12? Well, we'll, uh, we'll break out our map. You know, our map doesn't go to the higher latitudes and lower ones, uh, but we'll see what we can find that we can point out to you that we know. Roger.
John, how long did you want us to keep up this uh, photography of the high latitudes? Three each, 30 seconds. Stand by. You've probably got enough now. Anything you want to give us is fine, but don't uh, push yourself. We're happy with what we got now. Well, it's really amazing how much the size of the moon has changed just in the few minutes you've been on the air so far. I'm looking out my uh, small uh, hatch point at the right, and I can see the moon in the entire sphere right now. We have really moved out. We sure concur. Uh, I'm not half flight, though, Frank. Outside of Crank, what, what's our altitude right now? What's our altitude rate? Anybody know? Now, I think one of the things you can see in your TV, though, is how the uh, texture of the moon changes at the higher the sun angle and uh, over to the uh, extreme westerly region there, you can see how light it is and uh, how much more gray and stark it is by the Terminator, but we as Al said found it that way as the Terminator moved across, it all really looks the same. Roger, that shows up very clearly down here. Our off-board computer says we're 109 miles right now. Apollo 12, Houston, right now you're getting close to 1,100 nautical miles above the surface and you're coming up about 4,000 feet a second. Oh, okay, we're, we're reading our history wrong. We're showing 1,098 Uh, area that's sort of dark down in the lower corner of your screen is my sea. And it uh, looks as we pass over uh, to be one of the about medium sized bodies that, uh, that we see on the uh, earth side of the moon. The thing that's most noticeable about it is uh, the fact that there's many craters in it that are all filled up with the body material. You can just see the, uh, the Rim, outline of the rim. They apparently were once very big, like a, a lot of the craters you see over there near the Terminator. Now they filled up, uh, and so they don't appear so. Now it's down at the bottom of your screen by that little white dot. Roger, we see it very clearly. We assume that's the sea of fertility that's over on the uh, west limb. Ah, uh, that's permanent. Paul 12, Houston, we show that you're coming up at about one nautical mile a second. You're really moving out. Okay. We had 
dropped it down in on the back side of the boot just before the burn. We only put in 3,000 feet a second, and we were going uh, a little over 5,000 feet a second around the boot, and uh, we were talking about how it didn't seem like very much additional uh, velocity to get to take you away from the boot and head you on back to Earth. But I guess this low gravitational field here will just allows you to not put in a lot and uh, escape the sphere of input pretty readily. Right, your velocity is dropping off at about one foot per second each second. So you need it all you put in. It, Roger, that's a lot less than our velocity dropped off per second when we left Earth. It, uh, of course, was trying to pull us back much harder, and so we ended up slowing down from our 36,000 feet per second much more rapidly. You could look at the computer and see that uh, the velocity was dropping uh, many times that per second. Roger, we were watching you down here. Today, while uh, the lecture taking was going on, uh, three of us uh, had the opportunity to uh, discuss what we thought the texture of the surface was, especially uh, because we were interested in our landing area and possibly finding some Copernican ray material and looking at the rays and everything. And uh, they are quite readily visible from 60 nautical miles. But if you look at them carefully uh, through the binocular or something like that, uh, I think that the difference in texture is so slight when, when you get actually down on the surface that uh, Al and I had the impression on the lunar surface at our landing site uh, that we uh, just could see no contact difference whatsoever anywhere we went. And uh, I think that uh, as you look at the moon going away, you get that idea. You see highlights and whites and grays, and you can see rays and things like that, but they're really not that much different in color from one another. Roger. What about the uh, white and gray differences you saw over around the west side of Head Crater? Could you see those out over the uh, regional area? Well, I... I kind of have the feeling that uh, Al and I talked about this, that when we were in the right place uh, and our foot tracks turned up the uh, lighter material, and it was still the same material, it just had uh, weathered on the surface. And uh, we, we have the feeling that the ray material is probably the same thing. It's it pretty much the... Uh, the same general material, but it, it came at different times and it's had different amounts of exposure or weathering. Roger. Yeah, well, this is, uh, it just didn't seem to be any difference in the colors at all. Uh, if you look at any part of the moon at the same time as any other part of the moon. Now, as, you, as we started at the Terminator and went around the moon, it changed color from gray to white, finally to brown, and we all sort of thought that was about what it was. And then the next day, it did the same thing. The part that used to be more to the white, now it was the gray because the shadows were over there more as the Terminator moved in that direction. And we weren't able to see, except in several uh, spots, any real large differences in colors. I'll tell you, Pete, could you show them uh, that large crater down there in the lower left here? No, it's way over here on the uh, opposite side of the Terminator. There's Tycho. Can you show him that one? The one with the cracks, uh, several craters in the middle. That's a beautiful crater. Hey, just to give us some idea of the color, how would... Hey, just to give us some idea of the color, how would you describe... How would you describe the color of Smythe Sea and the Sea of Tranquility for us so we'll know how accurate our uh, TV color is? Just seems a chalky gray to us. 
Like Portland cement? Pretty much. If there's anything else. I want to know whether it's wet or dry. Uh, dark fire material. Uh, come on, looks wet. Would you, would you believe that? Not As a matter of fact, that's probably not too bad a description. If you just threw some Portland cement down and threw water on it, varying about to be a little more moist than, uh, and, than others, and I get the same idea looking down here. Yeah, the, the wet part, of course, would be the darker uh, mari material that's there. And it is lightened considerably by rills and craters and ejector that's been uh, taking place there. This is giving, giving it a lighter uh, texture, but, but basically remaining the same type of material, I'm sure. Hey, listen, tell us about those grooves and ridges you saw on the surface. Did you uh, get any patterns out of those? Could you see those from orbit? Well, is that the subsolar point? Oh, Don, once we saw... Sorry to cut you off there. Oh, it's a very bright impact crater, yeah. Also, the sea just to the south of that bright impact crater is the one that in the middle of it are two craters. One crater has a single ray that runs horizontally all the way through it. And the other crater has a single ray that just runs out one side of it. Very odd set of ray patterns there. Roger. I'd say, Don, you're asking, you're asking about those uh, lines. We don't, well, the ones we saw on the ground were very, very small, maybe an eighth of an inch. But there are a definite uh, patterns on the moon. I'm going to show you up at high latitudes right now. Let me see the monitor piece so I can see if I'm pointing the right place. And I think you'll be able to see some, some lines that seem to run from the pole all the way down towards the, uh, the center of the moon. Towards the equator. Let's uh, see if I can get them in the right place. Are you able to see that, Don? It's right. Uh, it seems to emanate right from the pole region, right where the uh, terminator strikes the, the pole, and then they seem to come down towards uh, the Mari area. They seem to run in parallel lines from that point on down. Uh, Roger, they just barely show up on our screen. But you get a look at the crater Tycho, that's pretty impressive because it's large, it has a lot of rays, and it also has, uh, although the rays at this particular sun angle aren't, aren't so visible, you can see it as, as a large, one of the larger craters down in the uh, southern part of the moon. Easily visible from Earth. In fact, it's the one, one of the most visible from Earth. Roger, we didn't know whether that was Tycho or whether that, whether that was a subsolar point. Oh, no, that's Tycho. And also that crater just to the north of it, which I don't know the name of, is uh, also a very white crater. It appears very white in, uh, on our little monitor up here. Roger, we see it very clearly down here, too. There you are. Let's move it to that hatch window. It's a better window to be. looks okay. Stop there, you got it now. That's a very impressive oh. picture. Okay, I got the monitor, Pete. Okay, uh, Dick just a little bit higher, a little bit higher, uh, So that we could, uh, I, I can't hold it any higher. Okay. Dick okay. just maneuvered uh, so that we could see the whole moon. And uh, that, that, that's it now. We have a whole moon out now. We've got a good picture of that. You know, the most amazing thing is that you were just in orbit down there a few minutes ago. Four 
so do us, and I'm sure you don't. I'm sure that's true. We're getting that sort of detached feeling, detached from the moon. You're cutting out just a little bit of the south. Yeah, it's in the, uh, it's, uh, I just can't move the camera there in the window. No, you're doing a great job. Well, I keep the camera up and down the same way all the time. Like. That's about the most I can get in right now. And if we're going so fast, though, that I think it'll all show up in there in a minute. Oh, that's beautiful. We can see all the way, of course, to the uh, western uh, limb and uh, the north terminator uh, about halfway uh, down to the south. Say, uh, are we coming out in the Earth Moon plane here? Are we going over the top or what? But we were just discussing this and wondering. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not obvious that we leave what we're doing. And my guess would say we'd be coming right out along the equatorial place, but what are we actually doing? We'll get it for you this second. Hey, listen, while we're getting that, uh, since you're the uh, international expert on lunar rock rolling, uh, how does that work? Uh, tell us what a rock looks like when it rolls down a, uh, a lunar crater, since you did uh, some of that on Earth. Well, it goes very slowly. And uh, <laughs> I guess the impression you have, the same way as if you throw something up there, and we had occasion to throw uh, some things away, uh, they sort of move out, uh, not too rapidly, but they just keep going. And, uh, that's exactly what happens when you roll a rock down the side of a crater. Once you can get, it was hard to get them going. I was surprised. Uh, I think everybody had the idea up there that, uh, because you're in such light gravity, uh, that things would uh, roll down rather easily. And that really wasn't the case. Once you got it going, it just sort of went along and animated slow motion, but it kept going for a long, long time. Do they bounce or do they dig in and do they go through the down to the bottom? Well, they bounce and slide uh, a little bit of everything, uh, just like they do on Earth, but uh, just stretch it out. I was, uh, I, I, I found that I couldn't walk. Uh, wherever we went, we loped. And uh, it just didn't seem natural not to lope. And, but when you loop, it reminded me of these pictures, uh, high speed motion pictures of, of watching a giraffe run or, uh, or something like that. That's just a feeling I had as I loped across because I'd have to step out and then just sort of hold what I had until I came down. And that's the way Al and I moved around on the whole traverse. Sounds like you're having a ball. Hey, if you could pitch down the little board, how eat a lot. Well, Al accused me of making him carry all the tools. And then uh, he wound up with all the ones that I had, too, and then I was just running around in front of him. <laughs> well, the funny thing about moving around on the lunar surface, you, you put on this uh, pressurized suit we wear, and you try to do it on Earth with even close to the weight you have on your back on the moon, and you get tired very rapidly from the walking. And, uh, and you don't have to walk, you know, over, let's say, uh, two or three hundred yards, and you're, you're ready for a rest. But on the moon, in the light gravity, with the same suit on, 
in the same way, your legs never seem to get tired. Now, I guess if you're, when you run up the side of a steep slope, you can do it, but just running around on a level ground, you're, you, you seem to assume some sort of a normal pace, and you're able to, uh, to go for long distances without your legs getting tired. The suit doesn't always want to bend like you want to bend. For example, it bends pretty well at the knee, and it bends pretty well in the ankle, but it doesn't want to bend up near the thigh, the top of the thigh. So what happens is you, you tend to run with a straight legs, land flat-footed, and then push off on your toe. And you think to yourself, well, I'm going to tire out my calves pretty soon because I'm not used to this sort of thing. But apparently, the force it takes to push off on your toe on the moon is much less than you just have when you walk or run on Earth. So your legs uh, just don't seem to tire. You can move around uh, rather easily, don't you think, Steve? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask the doctors if I have any idea, but uh, I, I'm sure that our heart rate stayed fairly low even when we were loping. I don't think we approached anywhere near the, the heart rates uh, that we had in just our normal walkthroughs and practices. Uh, in one G back on Earth. And uh, I agree with Al, you could go eight, nine hours out there and see what we had. The other thing that we did, which I think was kind of interesting, everybody got worried about falling over and going down slopes and things. And I fell over once up there and there wasn't any big problem. And we just finally, to expedite things, uh, we'd either just fall over on our face, pick up the rock and give ourselves a one-handed push-up, or just get down on our knees and get, get whatever it was we needed up down there because we picked up many rocks that were bigger than the tongs would pick up. Uh, Roger, your uh, heart rates were just about as expected and uh, the report is that you're just about in the Earth-Moon plane, just a very small bit out of the Earth-Moon plane but almost coming straight home. Also, we are about to lose one of the satellites that's bringing this uh, TV back to the States, uh, so we're probably going to have to bid goodbye here fairly soon. Okay. Sure. Why don't, why don't we just, uh, we'll zip inside for a second and say hello to everybody and then you can shut her off. Very good. Hey, now we see Dick. Hey, Donna. 
I understand uh, you changed your schedule around there quite a bit uh, since we left uh, last Friday. And we're very sorry about that, but uh, that can't be helped either. No problem. Uh, we uh, did we did all our work. Uh, I understand very early in the morning or very late at night down there, and uh, we had to stay up very late the first night out, about 20 hour a day, to adjust our schedule to the activities around the moon. And uh, we sure enjoyed it. And the hope that everybody there has enjoyed having us bring what we can to them. This is we were particularly disappointed that we weren't able to give you. Yeah, we were we were particularly disappointed that we weren't able to give you the lunar surface TV. It just didn't seem to work out, and uh, uh, I guess maybe uh, the next flight, Apollo 13, will give you a chance to to look at what's going on down there because uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, everybody was absolutely delighted with the tremendous job you did. What happened to Pete? We haven't seen him yet. Uh, he's he's going to come into view. I've been hiding in my favorite spot at the top of the tunnel. We've got all our gear stowed in here, by the way. Once you show up some of the gear, we got stowed. Survey your bag particularly, because that's unusual. And we got it stowed in a pretty slick place. Well, I don't, I don't know whether you can see all of it, but we do. We got the rock boxes put to bed and all the uh, surveyor gear. I guess uh, one of the big thrills, of course, for Al and I uh, was to uh, sit down next to the surveyor, especially when we stepped outside and looked around back at the space plant. <laughs> yeah, I saw it sitting right there on the other side of the crater. I also gave myself quite a thrill. I think you'll appreciate it when you see the pictures and you see how close we landed to the crater, which I didn't notice at the time because it was behind me. But I didn't want to overfly too far, but I guess I parked it pretty close to the edge of the crater. And uh, we were also uh, very impressed that uh, uh, the tracking and everything uh, put us right down the middle. Uh, everybody and all certainly did their homework there. We didn't have to do anything but land her. Yeah. And uh, Dick uh, surprised me, I think, uh, by finding us, not only finding us in the sextant, but also finding the surveyor in the lamp at the sextant. He also took some pictures through his uh, uh, sextant uh, with 16 millimeter camera of that on the next drive, and hopefully uh, we'll have movies of the lamp and the surveyor on the ground that, that are discernible in the movies. I don't know whether that'll work or not. We'll have to wait till we see the film. Very good. We'll be looking for them. Uh, we've enjoyed the trip. We've enjoyed the trip. Uh, everybody adapted to zero G real well. We enjoyed whistling in and out of the lamb and uh, after having flown eight days in Germany, it's a real pleasure riding around in this thing, being able to move around and uh, have all the good food, and hot water, and shade, and all those good things could do. We uh, kept the ship pretty spick and span, and uh, we do have things all neatly stowed. I don't know if you can show them. Why don't you show them the surveyor back? No, oh, okay. Can't see it. Well, with that, uh, I think we'll sign off, and uh, we'll see you in about three days. Thanks a million. All three of you did a 4 0 job, and your families and the whole team are waiting for you back down here on the ground. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, if you'll give us uh, poo and accept, we'll give you a PTC rest mat. And uh, for the PTC, we want to use quads Alpha and Delta. Hey, we're going to stay at this attitude if you go on. Okay, order, you got it. Poo and accept. Thank you. PTC is passive thermal control. This moon is just this white ball right out in the middle of a big black void. And it doesn't seem like either we're, we're separating from one another, but there just doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason why we are or why uh, why it's setting out there. All the time we were in lunar orbit, we were discussing the fact how unreal it looked and it, uh, it was uh, 
it's amazing to us to, to fly around it. It is just, uh, when you just think about going to the moon, it, it is uh, very, very unreal to be there. You know, your pictures were absolutely fantastic showing how fast you moved away from the, the moon. You, you really gave us a good picture of that. Well, we're still doing this really good small hurry. It's it's uh, it's just sort of unreal to look at. It's almost like a photograph moving away from you. That's seem possible. It could be a whole uh, uh, sphere that you were orbiting uh, a couple hours ago. Well, when you first uh, gave us a picture, you looked like you were uh, very close to uh, your orbital altitude, but by the time the uh, picture went inside, uh, it looked like about a basketball out at arm's length. That's pretty good, because right now at arm's length, it's about six inches. Tremendous. Yankee Clipper is 2,551 nautical miles away from the moon now. Velocity 5,403 feet per second. Hey, Don, do they have any hack on a mid course yet? Yeah, it's extremely small, uh, something like a third or a quarter of a foot, or a third or a half foot per second. Hey, that's great. That's great. It was a very excellent burn. Uh, it's going to be a real small one. Now, I'll tell you, this SPS engine is a real hummer. It gets out and goes, and it really performs well. It's a, an extremely smooth ride. We copy. Uh, during the TV transmission, uh, you heard Don Lind pass up a figure of 4,000 feet per second. That was not Apollo 12's inertial velocity. That was the range rate at which uh, Apollo 12 was... Uh, going away from the moon. Go. Uh, listen, once you guys get bedded down, we're not going to uh, awaken you in the morning. So whenever you get up and want to start a new day, you give us a call. Uh, you've uh, earned a good long night's sleep, so sleep in as long as you want. Okay, no problem. Yes, no idea. I think I gained weight on this trip. They've accused me of being a cowhound. How come you're not getting out and doing your mile a day? He doesn't run it from his couch to the food compartment. <laughs> <laughs> That's Conrad. Now, uh, is discouraging everybody from running these days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Al's going to do training schedule. He's going to become the training officer. Roger. Uh, the computer is yours. We finished uh, sending up your refs, man. Okay, thank you. Uh, how long can we, when do you want us to start PPC? Anytime you want. Okay, we'd like to watch it for a while. Uh, let's hold off. We're right in the middle of a playback uh, of data, so uh, give us some time on that. At 173 hours, 32 minutes, Apollo 12's distance from the moon, 2,761 nautical miles, velocity 5,321 feet per second. As we were explaining earlier, that 4,000 feet per second that we passed up, was in was the range rate in the vector directly away from the moon it did not have uh, several other components of velocity in it it was only in the uh, in the vector directly away from the moon apollo 12 houston go ahead uh, roger we've finished uh, dumping the data and so you can start ptc anytime you uh, want to uh after you finish 52. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 173 hours, 40 minutes. Yankee Clippers distance from the moon now 3,139 nautical miles. Velocity 5,185 feet per second. Apollo 12 uh, 
in the process of realigning its inertial platform at the present time. At 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, there will be a briefing in the briefing room at the Houston News Center by the Apollo spacecraft program manager Jim McDivitt and by the chief of the test division of the program office, Don Arabian, concerning the completed analysis of the electrical phenomenon associated with the launch of Apollo 12. That's at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in the briefing room at the Houston News Center. That briefing will be carried on the, uh, this release line. The crew should be, have entered into their sleep period at that time. We'll continue to stay up and monitor until the crew does uh, bed down. And this is Apollo Control, Houston at 173 hours, 41 minutes. At 173 hours, 50 minutes, Yankee Clippers distance from the moon, 3,606 nautical miles, velocity 5,044 feet per second. And go, Apollo. Uh, Roger, we just wanted to uh, give you the parking angles on the distance. Roger, we got him 12. Thank you. Uh, Houston, uh, you're ready for an e-memory dump? Give us just a moment. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, we're ready for that e-memory dump now. Okay. Apollo 12, uh, we've got a good e-memory dump. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for the good T-30 pad. Yes, sir. This is Apollo Control at 174 hours, 5 minutes. Apollo 12 is 4,295 nautical miles away from the moon, heading toward home at a velocity of 4,876 feet per second. The briefing in the Houston News Center on the analysis of the electrical phenomenon during launch of Apollo 12 is about to begin We'll take down this release line during the briefing, tape any air ground transmissions, and play those following the briefing. At 174 hours, 6 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 175 hours, 15 minutes. Apollo 12 is 7,392 nautical miles from the moon. Velocity, 4,443 feet per second. The crew has not yet turned in. They're now establishing the passive thermal control mode for the uh, sleep period. We have about six minutes of tape accumulated uh, during the news conference. We'll play that for you now. Houston, Apollo 12, which quads did you want disabled for the PTC? Uh, disable Baker and Charlie. We want you to use Alpha and Delta. Roger. Uh, I guess when we're established in uh, PTC attitude, uh, are you going to want us to go off the high gate and use the Yabbies tonight because of the performance of our... I gain. That's affirmative. Paul 12, uh, when you go off the high gain, we'd like you to, to turn off the high gain power during the sleep period 
and pick up with Omni Bravo. Okay, will do. Also, we'd like you to turn off the optics power uh, this evening for the sleep period. You want us to turn off the optics power this evening, huh? That is affirmative. Uh, and off. Uh, let me ask you again, Houston. Say again those two quads that you want disabled. Uh, Bravo and Charlie off. Alpha and Delta to be used. Okay. Apollo 12, Houston. Uh, Roger, I checked with your wives and I have a short status report on the family whenever you get a minute. Hey, outstanding. Let's hear it. Okay, Pete, I uh, talked to Jane and she said she really enjoyed the TV show. Also, she sent a letter out. Hold on just, hold on just a second. Gotcha. Give me out just a second. Go ahead. Okay, Pete uh, talked to Jane, and she said that uh, she saw the TV show and enjoyed it mightily, that it was a great show. Also, she sent a letter for you out to the carrier that will be there with all the, uh, the family news when you arrive. But she wanted you to know that all the family is well, and they're anxious for you to hurry home. Uh, Dick, uh, Barbara said, said that uh, they also uh, saw the uh, show, and they thought it was great, and the family's in... Uh, she says, again, great shape, so uh, they're looking for you back in a hurry. Al, I uh, talked to Sue. Okay, Doc, thank you. You bet. Al, I talked to Sue, and uh, it seems that uh, when uh, the network uh, put on the TV show, they had uh, Pete's name up under your picture, and she says it's been so long since she's seen you that that even confused her for a moment. But the family's... Uh, been watching the uh, flight, they're waiting for you, and they're looking forward to Splashdown, and everybody's fine. Thank you for checking, Don. You might uh, wear a name tag or something so that she'll recognize you. There won't be any worry about it for another 20 days or so. Roger. Uh, I've talked to her through the glass the LRL for a while. We, uh... We're just finishing up a uh, meal now, Don, and uh, we'll be coming at you with the post-sleep check report in about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Binary will be down here. Hope so. Follow 12, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston. You're extremely weak, Pete. Uh, Roger, uh, your rates look good, uh, so you can go ahead and spin up any time you want, and we assume that you have no dumps to do uh, uh, that will perturb the uh, roll. Roger. Uh, Pete, would you ask uh, one of the other crew to transmit? We can just barely read you. Still extremely weak, Al. You're uh, just barely audible. Uh, Roger, the problem is uh, probably between the site and Houston. We've got a good downlink signal, so we'll check it out here on the ground. Thank you. Uh, 12, uh, <clears throat> we copy just a little dumping going on. As soon as uh, that damps out, uh, you can go ahead and roll. Got it, voice, Houston contact, net one. Well, it appears that we've lost the uh, downlink uh, long line uh, for a few minutes. So as soon as we get it reestablished, we'll be back with you. Houston 12. Roger, that one came down loud and clear. Okay, are you telling me you don't want us to dump any urine? Is that correct? No, we're saying just damp out your rates for a few more minutes and then start your roll. Okay, but you don't want us to dump urine after we start PTC, is that right? Whatever is necessary, go ahead and do, but we'll uh, damp out your rates as much as you can before you start the roll. Okay. 
We just don't want to have to wake you up in the middle of the night and have you uh, do a maneuver for us. Yeah, I, it's no problem. We we uh, can keep it on board. So uh, I just I just I didn't know when we were down this light if it was gonna uh, mess us up, and I guess it probably will. So we'll go ahead and keep it on board. It's no problem. Roger. Apollo 12, Houston, your race was good to us. If you want to spin up, we're agreeable. Okay, we're just getting ready to do that right now. Thank you. Roger. Houston 12. Go ahead, 12. I screwed that one up, so I'm going to start over again. Roger. Apollo 12, Houston. Uh, Roger, we're going to be on uh, low bit rate uh, most of the night, so we won't be getting any biomed data from you. So if you want to disconnect your harnesses, that's fine with us. Okay, very good. Okay, let me give you the uh, checklist here. The crew status report, the commander had one uh, decongestant, the CMP had nothing. LMP had one sleeping pill last night, one decongestant. Uh, the fans have been cycled, the water's been chlorinated, we verified the valve, bat C is 37.0, pyro bat A 37.1, pyro bat B 37.1. You've got the memory dump, and as soon as I get PTC going here, we're uh, going to hit the pad actually, uh, LMP will be up here already. Very good. Have a good night. You've certainly earned your rest. Thank you. We'll see you in the morning. And how the rates look to you down there? Looks fine. Dinner up. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 175 hours, 26 minutes. That's the end of the tape. We signed off with the crew at an elapsed time of 175 hours, 20 minutes. We do not plan to uh, call them from the ground. Uh, we're going to let them sleep until they call us. We won't put in a wake-up call to them in the morning. Let them sleep as long as they like. An early look at the data from the uh, TEI burn by the flight dynamics officer, William Boone, shows the burn on time. The Delta V achieved of 3,000 42.4 feet per second against a predicted 3,042.3 feet per second. Based on that, he has not changed the uh, entry interface velocity numbers. They remain at 36,116.4 feet per second. An early look at the uh, entry angle shows it to be minus 6.69 degrees against a targeted minus 6.50 degrees. Uh, this will continue to be refined through tracking. We haven't had too much tracking yet since the burn, not as much as the flight dynamics officers like to look at. But based on this preliminary look, uh, mid-course correction 5 would be uh, only one-half foot per second or less. We also have the latest status report on the uh, lunar surface experiment package, in particular the cold cathode, cathode ion gauge. 
cold cathode ion gauge performed well when first activated, but its high voltage power supply turned itself off around 4 a.m. Central Standard Time on November 20th. This shutoff is probably due to arcing. The instrument can be reactivated, but turns itself off after a few seconds, indicating no permanent damage. Outgassing of the electronics is the suspected cause of arcing. To solve this problem, the gauge has been placed in a standby mode and further operation is not planned until residual gases have been baked out. This is expected to take from one to two weeks. Arcing is a common problem in high voltage circuits including home television sets. Electrical current jumps from one point to another across an air gap accompanied by crackling noises and a visible flash. Small traces of gas are more likely to sustain the current flow than either a normal atmosphere or a high vac vacuum. In the cold cathode ion gauge, the combination of high vacuum and moderate temperatures is conducive to release of gas molecules contained in non-metallic materials, such as potting compounds. Until the gas is dissipated, it permits arcing to occur. The overload resulting from current flow in the arc activates a safety circuit, shutting off the device. The condition has been encountered in vacuum chamber tests, but was avoided by pre-soaking the equipment in a vacuum for a few days before applying operational power. Flight to the moon had been expected to provide adequate soaking time. Apollo 12 is 8,013 nautical miles from the moon, velocity 4,389. Crew has turned in for the night and at 175 hours 30 minutes, this is Mission Control Houston.